benefits of receiving the breath of God divine empowerment if you have written it I'd like you to pray in the spirit for one minute because something is about to open up for somebody right there where you are seated lift your voice and pray in the spirit for one minute God is about to open somebody's eyes the benefits that can manifest in your life when the breath of God comes upon you somebody's eyes are about to be opened somebody's destiny is about to change you are about to see the missing link all these years you are about to see a secret that has been devoid of you all these years that is about to position you for an advantage lord open my eyes breathe lord breathe Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe, Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. I receive, I manifest your power, your wisdom to the nations. See Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive and manifest. Your power, your wisdom to the nation, to Jesus, lift that up, glorify. of receiving the breath of God. When you understand these five benefits, you will know that all it takes is for God to breathe on you. The next time you go to pray, all you will ask is, Lord, breathe upon me. Yeah. <laughs> Psalms 104 verse 30, verse 29 and verse 30. Psalms 104 verse 29 and verse 30. When you hide your face, they are troubled and dismayed. No, let's go to New King James. So the book of Job that you'll find, you'll have amplified. Say, so you send forth your spirit. Verse 29, please. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. Look at the next verse. You send forth your spirit and they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. That means anything that is dead remains dead until the breath of God is added to it. Benefits of receiving the breath of God. Number one, quickly, wisdom and supernatural intelligence. Wisdom and supernatural intelligence. 1 John 2 verse 20 and verse 27. He says, but you have an unction for the, from the Holy One. You have an unction, you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. What it means is two things. Number one, it means you know all the things that you should know part time. Then number two, you know the source of all things. It doesn't necessarily mean that you know everything. No, no. Positionally, it's true that you know all things. Positionally in Christ Jesus, in the realm of the Spirit, you have the ability, you have the advantage because of the Holy Spirit to know all things. But in reality, what that scripture means is that part time, per season, you know everything you need to know 
Why? Because you have an unknown thing. There's a supernatural force living inside of you that gives you the access to the things that are needed for your growth and for your advantage part time, per season. Number two, it also means that you know the source of all things. So, when something is given to you as a revelation, you can probe the source of that revelation because the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit that can bequeath revelation. It is natural for spirits to, to, to cast revelations or visions on humans. Every spirit has revelatory capacity. For instance, I've been preaching to you now for almost, about an hour revealing many things to you isn't it that's because as a spirit my spirit has revelatory capacity that is in that is ignited and enhanced by the holy ghost demon spirits also have revelatory capacity spirits of hell can reveal they can cast revelations on native doctors that's how a native doctor will know that they planted a charm somewhere so don't get deceived when a man is operating by a false spirit and he has revelatory capacities, even Satan has it too. But he says you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know the source of things. A vision can come and you can tell that this is from the pit of hell. You can tell that this is from the spirit. You can tell that this is just the opinion of an individual. Verse 27. He said, but the anointing which you have received from the Holy One abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true. You now see why I'm talking about source, isn't it? Because he's talking about you being taught. And it was in this same chapter that, that Paul, John spoke about the Antichrist and false teachers. That anointing abides in you as wisdom and supernatural intelligence and it teaches you it can teach you what you need to know part time it can teach you to probe the source of things and so that you will not need any human confirmation because you have received it from the anointing that dwells in you wisdom and supernatural intelligence jesus said in john 16 13 that when the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truths the spirit of truth is the life of truth. The force of truth, which is the Holy Spirit. He gives you supernatural intelligence. That means that you know things you are not taught. He gives you wisdom. That means you understand divine patterns that produces or profess solutions to problems. Wisdom and supernatural intelligence. That was what was exhibited in Adam. Genesis chapter 2 verse 19 to 20. The Bible says for Adam there was, no found, there was not found a helper. And in verse 20 the Bible says. Or verse 19 yes. That God gathered all the beasts and all the cattle and everything he created. All the animals to Adam. He said to see what he would call them. It's not like God wanted Adam to guess. No. God was so sure of what he had created. There is a spirit in man. There is a breath in man. And that breath gives man understanding. So it was a test run. He brought the animals to man to see what Adam will call them. And the Bible says whatever Adam called them, whatever the name that Adam gave them, whatever he called each living creature, creature that was its name. And that means that was his existence. That was his intelligence. So when Adam saw a cat and called it lion, he gave intelligence by that name. He gave purpose by that name. He gave existence. He gave continuity. Everything was captured. In fact, the lion had his sense of being when Adam gave it that name, lion. If Adam had seen a peacock and said, this is my helper that God will give to me, from that day, peacocks would have been the women. And then when God had created women, they would have gone to the animal kingdom. Because the Bible says in the next verse that there was no helper found. That means Adam, by the supernatural intelligence of God in him, looked at all the animals and knew. How did he know it? Was it taught anywhere? No. There is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. It's beyond your academic qualification. 
That's why a man may not go to school. But when that breath comes upon him, he can sit eloquent people, intelligent people. He can sit professors and confound them with wisdom. Why? There is a spirit. Man. Which school did Jesus go to at the age of 12? That he was teaching the teachers of the law. And I'm not in any way saying that you shouldn't go to school and study. But I'm just saying that when it comes to knowledge, it's in dimensions. There is a dimension of knowledge that you receive when you are not taught. It is called the wisdom of God. It is by that wisdom you can navigate life. It is by that wisdom you can wake up tomorrow and know that there is an accident projected from me. So I'm not going out. It is by that wisdom that Jesus looked at the sickness of Lazarus. He looked at the death of Lazarus and said that, the, that, the, that God will be glorified in him. They say, Master, was this man born blind? Uh, this man is born blind. Did he sin or his father or mother sin? Is he generational cause or is he a sin? Jesus never met the man before, but by this wisdom, he said, no, that the works of God will be worked in him. So somebody can carry an affliction for 30 years. And the only reason for why he or she suffered 30 years is so that a day will come where in the public you know, face of thousands of people, God can bring healing to that man and glorify his name. Who told you what you are suffering is not going to glorify God in the long run? You say, but my friends, their own is better at least. They had a silver spoon. God, they had a good start in life. They grew up under rich parents. Me, I grew up in a poverty-stricken home. Even my school fees, I hustled to pay. Now I'm in foreign level. How am I going to finish? How am I going to spend money for project? That the works of God will be worked in him. Finish that school first. Then in two years, God gives you a miraculous job. And you shift from penury to being a multi-millionaire. And God presents you to the whole world and says, Look what I can do with a man that came from nothing. He uses the weak things of this world to confound. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. You, you, you know, we, we are not able to endure. The Bible says, who for the joy of what was set ahead. Sometimes you need to take your eyes off the process and put it on the goal. The process may not encourage you, but look at the end. What is God going to work out of my affliction? Job said that even though my skin is destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. And the Bible says, and God restored the latter end of Job. Let me prophesy to somebody before you leave tonight. That everything that looks like a disadvantage in your life, may my God turn it around in your favor. May my God turn it around in your favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. God knows how to turn a mess to a message. A trial to a triumph. When his breath comes on it. Wisdom. Supernatural intelligence. God you called me into ministry. Why are you calling me to start in Zamfara? Zamfara. There are more, some cities in Nigeria that are more popular than even the name of the state, Zamfara. Is it that you are paying me for my sins or what to suffer? God says, no. Just remain laboring there with those five people. And in your dreams in the night, he will be showing you nations. <laughs> when the season comes and God has found you faithful, all he needs to do is breathe on you. And he will turn the attention of the world to Zamfara. They say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip saw, so yeah, come see. When he came to see the nonentity from Nazareth, the nonentity told him, I, before Philip met you under the tree, I saw you. He said, my Lord and my God. <laughs> Jesus says, see, because I told you we're under the tree, get ready, this nonentity, you will see even angels ascending and descending. When the breath of God comes on you, it releases wisdom and supernatural intelligence. Number two, divine direction. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. It says, you shall hear a voice behind you that will say, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right or whenever you turn to the left. In other words, you will hear 
precision, you know, direction with precision and accuracy. Wisdom that gives you direction so that you don't go to the right or to the left. The right or left there means that you don't dilly dally or you keep trying or experimenting things. You will walk circumspectly knowing this is the business to do. You will know this is the house to rent. This is the property to buy. This is the year to start building. Instead of buying a car, build now. Instead of building, buy lands now. Why? You shall hear a voice. Divine direction. So you don't do trial and error. That is never God's will. God never created any man to live by puzzle. Divine direction. Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27. This divine direction comes when the spirit of God, the breath of God is infused in a man. I will give you a new heart and I'll put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Divine direction. That breath of the Lord gives you wisdom. The profit of wisdom in its, is in its direction. The Bible says if the axe is not sharp, then much effort will be wasted in cutting the tree. Say, but wisdom is profitable to direct. So sharp the axe. And what would have taken you one hour to fell the tree, it will take you five minutes. Let me relate that to somebody's destiny. Instead of God giving you a job now, you start your career and you just keep going. What God wants to do is train and develop you. Develop yourself. You know why? Because, please come sir. If you work hard at your job, you will increase your income. Are you hearing me? Yes. But if you work hard on yourself, you will increase your value, which will increase your worth. So which one is better? Now that job that you want God to give you, he will give you. But it's a job that is from 8 to 6. And by the time one year is over, you don't know what you did with your life. And because God has weightier matters of destiny ahead, he may keep you away from that job for three years. Your friends call it delay. But ask God why Jesus spent 30 years and nobody knew him. And then in three years, he shook the world till today. That's a question for somebody. So God called you as a minister and said, Ah, the nations will hear your voice. And after five years, even Mary that you are staying have not heard your voice. Let me tell you something. Every time you find delay that God is responsible for, huh? is a mirage for speed. Every delay that God is responsible for is a mirage. He has just deceived the devil. The devil said, this one is still here after five years. Let's attack other people. He doesn't know that that's the one that will be a terror to his kingdom. And God keeps you there working on you. Teaching you how to, perfecting you on your skills. Understanding the realm of the spirit. Understanding the anointing. You see one vision and you want to jump and tell the whole world, God say, no, keep quiet. Understand how to navigate the realm of the spirit. And then after five years, one day, you stand before a small group of people and you begin to prophesy with accuracy and precision, with distinction, as if you have a PhD. Where did this one come from? It was in the cave. Oh, you are a wonderful singer, beautiful voice. You even have idea for your albums. You, you have already written down all your songs. Three albums. You are waiting to go to the studio. And for five years, God has not allowed you to go to the studio. God is saying, it's not just about album. Interact with the realm of the spirit. I want to put a sound from eternity in your heart. So that through your sound, other worshippers will find their sound. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. Wait, how many of you know when that song was released, there was a revival that came in the body of Christ. 
there are many of you that are worship leaders even many music ministers now that god is using mightily that was the song or those were the songs that helped them ascend into the realm of the spirit to get their own song so these ones are stars but this one is a legend that's what god wants to make out of you in your light we see light That when somebody is spiritually dry, all he needs to do is play your message. And in the midst of his prayerlessness and in the midst of his weakness, just the plane of your message, will, that person is transported to heaven and he returns back with grace and with strength and with vigor, ready to shake his world just by listening to one message. Because God has infused a sound in you. It's divine direction that does that that teaches you this so when god keeps you at the spot you wait patiently number three creativity i rush now because i want us to pray creativity is one of the benefits of receiving the breath of god mm, i wish i had time for this In genesis 1 verse 2 the bible says the spirit of god moved upon the waters chapter 2 verse 7 it was the breath of god that he put into man. Job 26 verse 13. He said by your spirit you have adorned. You have fashioned the heavens. So the spirit of God is the spirit of creativity. Psalms 33 verse 6. He said by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. The spirit of God is the spirit of creativity. That spirit is what created imaginations in the heart of man. According to Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11, it says he has put eternity in the heart of man. Eternity means infinity. Now your imaginations have an infinite uh, range or perspective. You can imagine things that are even beyond the natural. So what the Spirit of God will do is when the breath of God comes on your mind, it gives you supernatural abilities to be creative. Your mind becomes empowered to create things that are not yet seen. For by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which appear were not made by things which are seen. Those things that are responsible for the things we see are unseen. But when the breath of God comes on your imaginations. You, are, you have access to see the things that are unseen. That are responsible for the things that are seen and then when you bring it into this earth they call it invention they call it technology and it fosters and facilitates human existence and survival all of these cars they are manufacturing where do you think they get them from there has to be a dimension where they are seeing these things the kind of cars they are creating i don't understand i saw a car that they created is it honda or what it knows how to do they call it a crab walk that means all the wheels can turn you know the way the front wheel turns the back wheels can turn like that so the car can stay on one spot and turn 360 they call it crab walk that's the future i say god punish the devil <laughs> we are still here buying c180 c230 you buy c300 ah all the girls will follow you <laughs> meanwhile they're talking about cars that That was a mistake, you know. Creativity. In Exodus 31 verse 1 to 11 and 35 verse 30 to 35, there was such a man that had the breath of God on him, Bezalel by name. Creative. He was the one who fashioned the tabernacle that God showed Moses. How is it possible that you are able to replicate exactly what you did not see? It was Moses that saw the vision, but Bezalel created everything such that the Bible says, when they had finished it, the glory of God inhabited it. Supernatural creativity. Some of you, that's what you need for your business. Stop trying to do what other people are doing. It's laziness. Wait upon God till he breathes on your mind. And more and more that people eat and throw away, God will use it to elevate you. I heard of a woman who it was selling of Moimon that took her to the White House. Go and browse, a Nigerian woman. Browse it online, you see. Moimon, Moimon took her. It's creativity. So it's not about starting the business, it's about the skill by which it is marketed.
creativity. If people like Jeff Bezos and all of these billionaires look at the, they, they change the order of things. That somebody without any building or without any company can stay in his house and run a global shopping conglomerate. He's not producing anything, but he's selling things. It's after he became a billionaire, one year later, that he went and built office. Where are Nigerians? Where are Christians? Some of you, God has put in your mind apps that you can develop that will turn your life into a living wonder. Some of you, God has put in your mind the means by which people's life can be easy. But because it looks strange to you, you, you don't know that that's the creativity of God infused in you that God wants you to tap into. You are afraid because you know it will tax you. Creativity. Number four, revival. Psalms 85 verse 6. Say, will thou not revive us again, O God? Hosea 6 verse 2 after two days he shall revive us and on the third day he shall cause us to live in his sight when the breath of God comes on you it brings revival revival means restoring life to anything that is dead in 1 Kings 17 verse 22 a man called Elijah laid on the body of a dead boy and the boy came back to life a man called Elisha in 2 Kings 13, 21 that had the breath of God on him. Even though he was dead, they threw the corpse of a dead man. He was dead and his, his body decayed. Only bones were remaining. They threw the body of a dead man on his bones and the dead man jacked back to life. So the breath of God was so much on Elisha that even his bones carried residue on it. Reviver. When God puts you with his breath upon you in a dead church, that church experienced revival. Let, listen, let me tell you, revival does not have to be a program. Just carry, let's find a man that carries the breath of God on him. It will happen anywhere. It can happen on your street. It can happen in your office. It can happen in the marketplace. Revival, the ability to bring life to enforce the supernatural over the natural. He said, we thou not revive us again. And now in Hosea 6 verse 2, he says, after two days he will revive us and on the third day we will live in his sight. That was a prophecy about, you know, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God will have to come on dead individuals before they are revived. In Ezekiel 37, dead bodies, dead bones, the breath of God came on them, they were revived. But in the New Testament, you don't need to wait for the breath of God to come on you again. You now carry the breath of God inside of you. Romans 14 verse 9 said it is Christ who died and rose again and revived. King James translation. It is Christ who died and rose again. Both died and rose and revived. Past tense. That means that as a man in Christ Jesus, because the breath of God is in you by the Holy Spirit, you can live naturally revived. The reason why many people's prayer life is going up and down is because they are living with a revelation that belongs to the Old Testament. They believe that there is a point where they can get to and they faint. Meanwhile, the Bible says that God gives power to the faint. How does, how does he give power to the faint? He puts his spirit into a man. But in the New Testament, you don't need, you are not like the Old Testament that the, the spirit of God will come to revive you. You now carry that spirit in you. So you can live always on fire for God. On your weakest days, you are the strongest. What did Paul say? Therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ will rest upon me. He said, for when I am weak, then I am strong. I wish somebody got this, this revelation. You live revived. You live charged. There is life bursting forth from you. Your antennas are sharp 247. 
gone are those days where you you'll be hot for two months and then later you just go down no your body can be weak but your spirit that is recreated in christ jesus carrying the breath of god in it can never be weak and so strength will no longer need to come from heaven upon you strength now comes from within you now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh where above you no within you to a point where you now become a source of life to people there are some men of god that if they travel to a territory all the churches will experience revival imagine if we host a crusade here now and, and we bring god's servant apostle joshua selman You must get there. You must know God to that level. Those kind of men, whether they pray or not, just carry them and land in a territory. They just stand and say, all oh, the spirits in this territory, you know my voice. Clear. What kind of grace did Riyad Bonki carry? One week to the crusade, native doctors are coming out from the bush. All the people that they tied, all the families that they tied, they are carrying it. It is Christ who both died and rose again and revived past tense. You no longer need to live without the fire of God. You now carry the fire of God in you. You are now a walking manifestation of the power and the grace of God. It is you that God will use to electrocute other people into spiritual power. It is your presence that God will use to, to transport men into higher dimensions. There is an energy of God living inside of you. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That might is inside of you. There was a man called E.W. Kenyon. Powerful man of God. One of the people who brought the, the perspective of the new creation realities to the body of Christ. It was said that in his church, nobody remained sick. Nobody died till he died. If you die, he will wake you up. If somebody breaks a bone in their body, in the service there, he will go and speak to the bone and the bone will become straight. Go and browse about him. He held up E.W. Kenyon. In fact, some of the things he wrote in his book, it took nearly a hundred years for the body of Christ to accept as revelation. We were too far behind. We thought that he was the one who brought the perspective of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The positional advantage of the believer keep his picture there it was this man you need to browse about this kind of people you need to go and research about their work and enlighten yourself for years he was called a heretic because the revelation he brought was too far ahead of his generation there are men like that in our days some of them in the prophetic they are taking it to another dimension I don't care whatever any blogger says but as far as the prophetic is concerned in this nigeria i will always respect apostle johnson suleiman you think if it is fake all these years no no there are other prophets who, but this one Another man that I respect so much. You see, I don't care about, I don't, all of this scandal, all this, not my business. Though. Follow people for years. Another man that I salute is you, but Angel. Listen, I'm not his follower, but I respect that man. You have to just believe it. Even if the people around him are fake, even if they are saying, let them say all they want. At least I've followed this man's ministry for over 10 years. It's impossible. To fake what he's doing is impossible look at nigeria in the afcon african cup of nations it was obvious that we'll win it somebody came in his service and said nigeria will win oh everybody that saw nigeria will win they saw correctly but i told god to change it and he so he told he told god he said can an eagle carry an elephant that's what he told god and God said, okay, I've changed it. And then all of a sudden, many people who prophesied, it looked as if they lied. They didn't lie. Nigeria was meant to win it. See the person that changed it. And if you know this man, listen, you know why I'm saying this today? 
we are in the body of Christ now. We just castigate and slander people. Let's talk about their good side. Yeah, he was involved in this scandal in this country. Forget about it. You, you. If God called you and your life was filled with scandal, how would you feel if people don't want to listen to you simply because of a mistake? How would you feel? This guy has been prophesying on football matches for years. So over time, because he has been faithful in it, he that is faithful in little is faithful in much. God has now increased his authority that now no longer only prophesy on it, but I give you the permission to change it. Argentina was playing finals with which country? France. And God spoke to him. I said, I give you the liberty to bring your date of birth. And his date of birth was 1970 something. That was the year that Argentina won. And while the match was going on, somebody... We have to press into God to carry that kind of power. In fact, you know what? I just preached the fifth point. Power and authority. So no need to go about it again. We need to contend for that kind of power. The reason why they don't respect Christianity again in our territory is because we have too many powerless people. The people that carry small, they are too few. When everybody can carry this thing. I and the children that the Lord has given to me are for signs and wonders. You that is there at the end of the overflow listening to me. You are here because God wants to infuse in you his breath. So that you can become a walking expression of the technology of heaven. How did Jesus turn water to wine? All those disciples that follow Jesus. You think they... You, what, do you, what, do you think will, what do you think is operating in a man that will abandon everything and follow Jesus? If not that they have seen something supernatural. Not only revival, power and authority. Micah 3 8 says, I am full of power as by the Spirit of God. When the breath of God is upon you, you carry power. Are you ready to pray this night? Let me tell you this before we pray. Thank God for all the testimonies you hear here. You heard the testimonies today and you hear it every week. But I'm not stopping there. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. I will press into God until I become a mobile expression of power. That breath, when it comes upon you, it, it superimposes on your background, it superimposes on your weakness, it superimposes on any disadvantage you have. It translates you all of a sudden. It gives you re results that will force your critics to believe you. At a point when the miracles of Jesus became too much, the Pharisees could not hold it. Even the, there was a time they sent soldiers to go and arrest Jesus. The soldiers went there and they were held spellbound. They were charmed by Jesus' ministry. They came back without Jesus. The Pharisees said, where Jesus now? They say, we have never heard any man speak like that. They say, even you too, you have been charmed. There was a time even the Pharisees could not help, they could not deny that this one was a man of God. Nicodemus said, no man can do these things except God be with you. The only thing they were envious of was that he had gathered crowd. And it is true, when the breath of God is upon you, your life will produce results that will attract enemies. But don't be afraid. For he prepares a table before you in the presence of enemies. He's in the midst of adversity that God lifts men. 